Each person has within his or her brain a special organ called a reticular cortex. This small finger, like part of the brain, functions in a way similar to a telephone switchboard in a large office building, just as all phone calls are received by the central switchboard and then rerouted to the appropriate recipient. All incoming information to your senses is routed through your reticular cortex to the relevant part of your brain or your awareness. Your reticular cortex contains your reticular activating system. When you send a goal message to your reticular cortex, it starts to make you intensely aware and alert to people, information and opportunities in your environment that will help you to achieve your goal. For example, imagine that you decided that you wanted a red sports car. You write this down as a goal and you begin to think about and visualize a red sports car. This process sends the message to your reticular cortex that a red sports car is now important to you. This picture immediately goes up onto your mental radar screen. From that moment onward, you will start to notice red sports cars wherever you go. You will even see them driving and turning corners several blocks away, parked in driveways and in showrooms everywhere you go. Your world will seem to be full of red sports cars. If you decided to buy a motorcycle, you would start to see motorcycles everywhere. If you decided to take a trip to Hawaii, you would begin to notice posters, advertisements, brochures, and television specials with information on Hawaiian vacations. Whatever goal message you send to your reticular cortex activates your reticular activating system to make you alert to all possibilities to make that goal a reality. If you decide to become financially independent, you will suddenly begin to notice all kinds of opportunities and possibilities around you that have to do with achieving your financial goals. You will see stories in newspapers and recognize books on the subject. Wherever you go, you will receive information and solicitations in the mail. You will find yourself in conversations about earning and in investing money. It will seem as though you are surrounded by ideas and information that can be helpful to you in achieving your financial goals. On the other hand, if you do not give clear instructions to your reticular cortex and your subconscious mind, you will go through life as though you were driving in a fog. You will be largely unaware of all these opportunities and possibilities around you. You will seldom see them or notice them. It has been said that attention is the key to life. Wherever your attention goes, your life goes as well. When you decide upon a major definite purpose, you increase your level of attentiveness and become increasingly sensitive to anything in your environment that can help you achieve that goal faster. Your major definite purpose can be defined as the one goal that is the most important to you at the moment. It is usually the one goal that will help you achieve more of your other goals than anything else you can accomplish. It must have the following characteristics. One, it must be something that you personally really, really want. Your desire for this goal must be so intense that the very idea of achieving your major definite purpose excites you and makes you happy. Two, it must be clear and specific. You must be able to define it in words and you must be able to write it down with such clarity that a child could read it and know exactly what it is that you want and be able to determine whether or not you have achieved it. Three, your major definite purpose must be measurable and quantifiable. Rather than saying, make a lot of money, it must be more like earn $100,000 per year by a specific date. Four, it must be both believable and achievable. Your major definite purpose cannot be so big or so ridiculous that it is completely unattainable. For example, a woman approached me at one of my seminars and told me that she had decided upon her major definite purpose. I asked her what it was and she said, I am going to be a millionaire in one year. Curiously, I asked her approximately how much she was worth today. It turned out that she was broke. I asked her what kind of work she did and it turned out that she had just been fired from her job because of incompetence. I then asked her why she would set a goal to acquire a million dollars in one year under these circumstances. She informed me that I had said that you could set any major goal you wanted as long as you were clear, and she was therefore convinced that was all she needed to be successful. I had to explain to her that her goal was so unrealistic and unattainable in her current circumstances that it would only discourage her when she found herself so far away from it. 
Such a goal would actually end up demotivating her rather than motivating her to do the things she would need to be financially successful in the years ahead. A man at one of my seminars told me that his major definite purpose was world peace. I explained to him that unless he was the head of a major superpower, there was very little influence he could have on world peace. Such a goal would only keep him from setting a personal goal that was attainable, something he could work on every day. He was visibly irritated and walked away unhappy with my reluctance to encourage him in his fantasy. In both of these cases, they were using goal setting against themselves. They were setting themselves up for failure by creating goals that were so unachievable that they would soon become discouraged and quit making any efforts at all. This is a real danger when you begin setting big goals for yourself and you must be careful to avoid it. It can be a blind alley that leads you into discouragement and demotivation rather than success. I made this mistake myself when I was younger. When I first started setting goals, I set an income goal that was 10 times what I had ever earned in my life. After many months and no progress at all, I realized that my goal was not helping me because it was so far beyond anything that I had ever achieved. It had no motivating power. In my heart of hearts, although I wanted it, I really did not believe it was possible. And since I did not believe it was possible, my subconscious mind rejected it and my reticular cortex simply failed to function. Don't let this happen to you. Your major definite purpose should have a reasonable probability of success, perhaps 50-50 when you begin. If you have never achieved a major goal before, set a goal that has an 80% or 90% probability of success. Make it easy on yourself, at least at the beginning. Later on, you can set huge goals with very small probabilities of success and you will still be motivated to take the steps necessary to achieve them. But in the beginning, set goals that are believable, achievable, and which have a high probability of success so that you can be assured of winning right from the start. Your major definite purpose must be in harmony with your other goals. You cannot want to be financially successful in your career on the one hand and play golf most of the time on the other. Your major goals must be in harmony with your minor goals and congruent with your values. Here's the key question for determining your major definite purpose. What one great thing would you dare to dream if you knew you could not fail? If you could be absolutely guaranteed of successfully achieving any goal, large or small, short term or long term, what one goal would it be? Whatever your answer to this question, if you can write it down, you can probably achieve it. From then on, the only question is how. The only real limit is how badly you want it and how long you are willing to work toward it. One of my seminar participants, a professor of chemistry at a leading university, had won a Nobel Prize in chemistry two years before in partnership with two other scientists. He told me that when he started his university career in his 20s, he decided that he wanted to make a major contribution in the field of chemistry. That was his major definite purpose. He focused on it for more than 25 years and eventually he was successful. He told me I was clear from the very beginning. I never doubted that I would eventually make such a significant contribution to chemistry that I would win the Nobel Prize. I was happy when it happened but it was not a surprise. Everyone wants to be a millionaire or a multimillionaire. The only question is whether or not you are willing to do all the things necessary and invest all the years required to achieve that financial goal. If you are, there is virtually nothing that can stop you. Here is an exercise for you. Take out a sheet of paper and write down a list of 10 goals you would like to accomplish in the foreseeable future. Write them in the present tense as though you had already achieved these goals. For example, you would write, I weigh triple X pounds or I earn triple X dollars per year. After you have completed your list of 10 goals, go back over the list and ask yourself this question. What one goal on this list, if I were to accomplish it immediately, would have the greatest positive impact on my life? In almost every case, this one goal is your major definite purpose. It is the one goal that can have the greatest impact on your life 
and on the achieving of most of your other goals at the same time. Whatever goal you choose, write it on a separate sheet of paper. Write down everything that you can think of, that you can think of that you can do to achieve this goal, and then take action on at least one item on your list. Write this goal on a three by five index card that you carry around with you and review it regularly. Think about this goal morning, noon, and night. Continually look for ways to achieve it. And the only question you ask is how. Your selection of a major definite purpose and your decision to concentrate single-mindedly on that purpose, overcoming all obstacles and difficulties until it is achieved, will do more to change your life for the better than any other decision you ever make.